It is a beautiful sunny day out today. And, uh, yeah, you know, I was just thinking it was three weeks ago today that I last used my car. You know, this uh, COVID-19 epidemic, it has sure made me a shut-in. No, that's not 100% true, because I think there was at least once last winter that I went three weeks without using my car. So maybe the winter has more to do with it than the COVID. Uh, anyway, let's see what we can do here. One of the viewers made a very interesting comment, and it threw a little scare into me when I read it. And the comment was, are you going to be able to read the numbers on, that are on the photo etch sheets now that you've painted over this? I didn't really think a whole lot of it. I, I knew I was painting over the numbers, but I just assumed I should be able to read them. And I sort of can. But you, you'll notice here, even though you're quite a ways away, the number 41 there, you should be able to see it. You won't be able to read it, but you should be able to see that there is something right there. But if you move right over here, I think this says number 36. I'm not sure without putting on my strong glasses. Um, okay, now the flat paint is over that number. It just does not stand out. I think what photo the photo etch people are thinking is that they're relying on the difference of reflection to make the embossed number uh, stand out. Uh, the In the embossing, being as it's not very deep, now uh, I think that says a 44. I'll put the macro lens on and, and just we'll just look at it and see how, how well would we be able to see it uh, with strong glasses. I, if I uh, use my magnifying hood, I can see almost as well with it as when we're going to use the uh, macro lens. Okay, we're focused in on the number 44 here, and yes, it can be red, but not nearly like the numbers that aren't painted over. Let's see if I can find something that, uh, you know, it hasn't been painted over. They just jump out at you. Now, you will remember that I said, I am an old Canadian. And I think in feet and inches. And way back when I was making the Titanic and Lusitania, which were 1 350 scale, uh, I was 6 feet tall, which was 72 inches. And what I had done was I took a little piece of sprue and I adjusted it so that it would be the, the right length. In other words, it would be 6 feet tall uh, if you stood it on the deck of the Titanic. Now, of course, that was to 350. Now, we're working with 200 scale, which um, is a lot bigger. The, the number's smaller, but the, the ship is bigger. Um, so what I'm thinking of doing here is cutting a toothpick so that it would be the same height if I was to put it somewhere beside the ship, on the, on the deck, for instance, um, as, as a six-foot-tall sailor. Now, <clears throat> it seems to me I was watching, uh, I think it was uh, Scott was opening a, uh, a detailing kit and in it came a whole bunch of little figures that were already to 200 scale. Uh, but I don't want to have to spend any money. I can just cut a toothpick and have this. Well, it won't be as nice, of course, but anyway, so what have we got here? Uh, 72 inches. So that'd be 72 thousandths because we wanted, I want to measure this thing to a thousandths of an inch. So it'd be 72, one, two, three. Okay, now we're going to divide that by 200. Okay, I've already done this, as you can see. Okay, so that would be 36 thousandths of an inch. Now, when I was uh, I made, made the measure, made the little stick man for uh, the Titanic 40 years ago, I actually used this this caliper, this one right here. So we're gonna we're gonna cheat here, and we're gonna use this one here. It should already open up to inches when it... Yeah, there we go. Is it on zero? Yeah, it's pretty much on zero. Just move, move it in a little bit. Maybe you can read it better here. Okay, so we want to get 360. I may have to do this off camera to get it just right. We're getting there. Just a smidgen. Oh, too much. 
Well, that's pretty close. 360.5 thousandths. Uh, can you read that? All right. Now, let's uh, lock this in place here. And uh, we can uh, adjust our toothpick so that it'll just nicely fit in there. Now, I'm going to have to do that off camera. Now, I realize our caliper is timed out here, but I, after I double checked everything, yeah, it should be on the same setting as it was before. I have sanded this down. I think that's pretty well, that's close enough. It, it, it might be a, a, a smidgen too short, but then of course so am I. Okay, if I uh, squeeze it down here so that there's a bit of a friction fit, it's one one thousandths of an inch too short. Um, yeah, what would that be, about an eighth of an inch in real life? Uh, anyway. Okay, I've got a piece of copper wire on it here, and uh, I think you can probably figure out what that's all about. Now we can just sort of, you know, place it on different places a lot easier, and be a lot easier to hold on to than trying to hold on to it like this. Um, yeah, let's let's try it out. Now, obviously, this is not the deck of the ship, the shelter deck, where this piece is going to go on, but the height will be the same. Now, if you will recall, we were uh, wondering why it was, all right, I was wondering, why is it that these reels, these hose reels, were so high up off of the deck? Now, if you, if you put uh, our little six-foot-tall sailor there, you can see that the, the, uh, the reels are, are almost, you know, way out of reach. I mean, even if he went up the ladder, that, that would be inconvenient. The only thing that could possibly be is that maybe the part of the hose came down so that you could grab onto it and then you could just pull it out. I don't know. I couldn't find any photographs of this part of the deck. Uh, anyway, um, I think it was uh, Jim Steen was wondering, uh, you know, if I was going to actually measure this and see how high it is from the deck to the bottom. Well, I didn't measure it, but that that's a, gives us a pretty good perspective here. If you've got a little sailor running along saying, fire, fire, oh, I can't reach the hose, I can't reach the hose. Okay, um, all right. I'll, I'll do almost anything to not have to do railing today. And I, I don't know why that is, you know. Um, I'm, just, I'm just putting it off. Now this piece here, it will be going right in the middle there. I know it's sort of curved right now. I'll straighten it out later. Uh, I'm hoping that the, that the, where, where do I get it here? Okay, I'm hoping that when we put this one on, it's going to go like, like this. Now you can, you can see here, at least I'm hoping you can see it, where's something better to point with. Okay, I'm hoping that when I bend it at this post, and I bend it at this post to come in this way, and then bend it, you know, and get it all the right shape, in other words, it's going to want to fit, <clears throat> excuse me, on the inside of this uh, raised part of the superstructure or bulkhead. Now, it, it, it might be that they've made this thing so that it is, is going to go on top. But I, I remember from, from experience, when, when we were doing the uh, Bismarck, uh, I, I found it really easy to, to uh, get the railing in place if I could set it just on the inside of the gunnel, it glued up really nice. So it, it almost looks like it should, and yet when this is straightened out, the whole thing is going to go out just a little bit. So it may, it may not. Um, I also have to decide how am I going to bend it. I would like to use uh, Andy's photo etch bender, except there are going to be so many bends 
that after the first couple of bends, I'm not going to be able to get it in place. So I think I'm probably going to use my uh, uh, Tamiya. Uh, where are they? Uh, photo etch uh, pliers. And I think in order to not scratch that uh, 66 uh, Tamiya gray, uh, maybe what I should do is uh, put a little bit of tape um, just to sort of cushion it. I'll put it on the j inside of the jaws so when I squeeze down it's not bare metal on on the paint. At least that's the plan here. I'm, I'm just thinking out loud here. Okay, now if I do the same thing on this one, I think that'll be alright. It'll help anyway. Makes sense to me. Okay, I'm thinking, you know, maybe I can use Andy's Photo Etch Bender here, but only, only the uh, base part of it, um, except that then I've got, you know, the photo etch against the bare metal again, although this is very smooth. I think what I'm going to do, put a piece of paper right there because that'll sort of help a little. Alright, now what I've got in mind is, uh, first of all, we've got to make our first bend right right here at that fir very first post. Like, this would be the middle. No, no this would be the middle. And then it would be a, a section this way and a section this way. And then the bend goes, it goes in and then out and then in. Anyway. Now I've got the posts on the outside. In other words, the other side of the rail. So we want, we want the part that I'm, side that I'm touching right now to be the outside of the rail. Now I've got to try and I might have to raise this up just a little bit because the angle is wrong here. Um, yeah, I'm just going to have to reposition here. Okay, now when I roll this over, I do not want it to, to slip. It seemed to bend uh, just about exactly in the right place there, right at the center of that post. All right, now if I can do the same thing right here. Well, I have just checked the clock here. It's going on for three o'clock. I have had so much fun wasting time here. I've got to wrap this video up. So. Uh, We'll bend some more in tomorrow's episode. Thanks for watching, and all being well, we'll see you tomorrow.